you guys the articles because I think it's really important that we understand based upon what I've read where I think that the um, the negotiation, if you're going to call it that, it's not negotiation, it's called a revolution. And I've read several articles, Newsweek, Bloomberg, New York Times. I've read several articles that are calling it just that. I called it first. I called it a revolution because that's what it truly is. You have people that are on the uprise. Remember, policy, fiscal, and monetarily, we want to change the way status quo is. If you want to have change, you got to actually involve yourself in change. That's where the people took the stage. But you got to also understand this. Where did this change take place? See, when you're Muslim, I really believe that change takes place inside of their churches because they go to mosque on Fridays. The men go to mosque. The women go to mosque. The young men were hearing people like Sistani and Kamimi and these other people, these religious clerics speaking to the youth and some clerics tell them you know suppressive things oppressive things it makes you bide by the country such as they do in iraq it's more of us i would call a more political ideology behind islam in iraq who astani who sistani the supreme alatola who is more of a religious person and who's over all the shia muslims in everywhere he's above everybody and he's in iraq but remember he's an iranian okay Now, you got to understand where are these demands coming from. Sistani, I'm going to get into his history. I'm going to I'm going to read these quickly these demands because they're not wishes, they're not wants, they're demands, okay? Number 1, we want to topple the government and all religious secular parties. Now, that's important because Sistani's belief there's Sistani's fundamental belief about religion and state is separatism. There should be no secretism and there should be no nepotism and there should be no I put my faith before I put my government. They're not communist. Communism is more of everything. There's no God. There's no nothing. There's only state and people. People are assets. State is the church, right? So that's not that's not Islam. Islam is more based upon the beauty of God and what God does for this. But in all of that, I don't believe that Sistani, and I know this for a fact, doesn't preach like Kamani does, who's in Iran, the whole belief that Islam and the state mixed together. That's more of a communist in my belief system a mixture of the two, and I don't believe it goes that way, okay? So top of the government and all secular parties. Change the constitution, establishment of government by the Iraqis to abolish it parliament. So like I've told you all, parliaments don't work. Look at England, look at uh, a lot of places that have happened. Italy, I believe, had a parliament one time. Spain, um, people like that, um, parliaments don't work. You need to have a true democracy, checks and balances. A true president, vice president is your is your check. Is, is like someone gets taken out, they're there to take over, and then checks and balances, and then so on and so forth. Salaries to be paid off by the people and all sects who live in Iraq, maybe small or large, has a monthly salary for life. I said that last night. That is actually the HCL law. Infrastructure modification. Yeah, it's too convoluted, Iraq. If you look at your business model as a country, it's way too convoluted, meaning that you've got too much fluff and not enough action. You need to streamline how many managers that you have, directors, MPs, they could take their MPs from 300 down to probably 150 and they could run that country way more efficiently, pay those MPs more, have way more quorum and have way more action is meaning to get things done quickly. Um, the establishment of housing units, we know that there's all types of rumors and not rumors, there's all types of articles out there that say that they're building their big housing units out there. The problem with that is that because parliament's so corrupt, now notice what I say, parliament's corrupt, but parliament's be corrupt, like I told you yesterday, because of who supports the parliament? Iran funds most of the political blocs that are in Iraq. So to get rid of those blocks, we'll talk about that again, but to get rid of those blocks, you got to understand where the funding of terrorism comes from so imagine this you're Iraq and somebody comes to you and says hey you guys don't have a lot of money so we're gonna give you some money and we want you to kind of carry out our political agenda and you're like well what's your agenda well nothing for right now we just kind of want you if something comes up where we want to trade goods basically or, or build a bridge or do this or trade with us just give us favoritism well what's the bad thing in that we both don't have any money so if we both trade in monies then we both kind of come up right well, that's kind of how these things started. And because of what happened in the Saddam era, see, Saddam was the, the biggest anti-Iran thing that could happen. 
But Iran was pro-American back then. So you see what I'm saying? So the checks and balances were off. And so Iran put forth this huge effort. And you're going to meet this General Somalia I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. That started off this whole, let's topple Saddam and get rid of the terrorism. But then this guy Rouhani takes over in Iran. And the checks and balances go back the other way. And that's where Iraq failed everybody. And that's where the systematic religious fracture comes from Qam and Najib. And Sistani and Kabimi, I think I'm saying his name correctly. And that's where both of these supreme clerics, and that's where I believe the true demonstrations are coming from, are coming from Sistani and his belief system that there should be no corruption. Iraq should be separate and sovereign. Iran shouldn't meddle. And Sistani was basically the safety valve for Iran. And since that safety valve is gone, and I'll show you why it's gone, that's why Havoc's running the street. It's kind of like this. If, if, if your great granddaddy, who you know is the baddest dude on the block, who's the most religious and you fear him and you think all these things, tells you to run him up as the youth, and they're, and he's really not checking anybody, you're going to run him up. Right? There are chiefs, but the chiefs are telling them to do whatever you want, and the chiefs are telling them to rebel against the masters. Remember, if the chief is Sistani, who the person that they consider the most high, they call him his excellency. They don't even call the, the president his excellency. Or they don't even say, they usually say peace be upon him or something like that. But they don't even call like the PM his excellency. They call Sistani his excellency, the one most high. The one who they believe is hijab, who is like the descendant of Muhammad almost. Like this guy is major, major, major. Okay? He is like the supreme cleric. The rest of them are like clergymen. That means nothing. Okay, compared to Sistani. Sistani is the, the main guy, okay? Labor offices are set up by government for citizens and all the holders of higher degrees are recruited. Well, the, the way that's executed is you got to get rid of your cheap labor force. So you have to say that if you're going to give people like Iran opportunities to be your cheap labor or your grunt labor, then you've got to pay them pennies on the dollar under the table. But I think they need to get all of Iranian labor force out of the country because as we've seen, if you let them in the country, they're cancerous. They will infiltrate infrastructure, go into places like policing, military, um, grunt work, whatever, and they become part of the infrastructure and they're hard to get rid of. So I think getting rid of all of them and only hiring for a while Iraqis and shutting off that border is a great idea. Renewal of the penal code. Well, not renewal of the penal code, but enforcing it. Restructure the army and the police and prevents the establishment of security aspects not belonging to the Ministry of Defense of Interior. But more so the fact identifying the Iranian infrastructure, the infiltrants, and getting rid of them and trying them is treasonous. Iraq did show all... Uh, full committee is formed to try all the corrupt since 2003. So since, since 2003, that's your Maliki's, your Abadis. And remember what I said yesterday. There is, I'm not truly worried about the three presidents besides Mahandi. If Mahandi turns out to be dirty about some dirty play between him and Iran, which I'm sure you could come up with something, but get rid of parliament, including Sauter's dirty ass, because he's dirty, 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 and keep the three presidents. Okay, that's the truth. Get rid of parliament wholly. All of them are dirty. I don't care if they're independent, whatever. If they're a faction of one group and they're a small subset, I say get rid of all of parliament because that's easier. Have elections for that, but your presidency and then elect everything else under it subset. Okay. Restructure the army and the police. We talked about that. Iraq Judiciary uh, All Committee is formed to try all the corrupt. We talked about that. Prohibits any religious component of the rule. That's right. So just because you're Sunni doesn't mean you don't get a job. And just because you're Shia doesn't mean you get all the main jobs. And subsects there forth, meaning by bigger city or by bigger jurisdiction or province, whatever. You should be hired because you're a technocrat. You can perform the task, not because you hold some type of birthright to it which is basically bullshit or nepotism. Um, one of the parties establishment be called the People's Democratic Party. What they're saying is it's not truly communism. What they're saying is they want a democratic structure that's based upon votes and based upon elections, not based upon, well, hey, Mr. Brando got a job, so I'm going to hire Ms. Beebe to be the president. Ms. Beebe's cool with Hope, so Hope's going to be this. And Hope's cool with Greta, so Greta's going to be this. And Greta's cool with... You know, uh, Beth, so Betty's going to be this. You know, no, no, no. Well, let's actually have people that can actually do the job. 
It is forbidden to distinguish between components of the Iraqi people. This is my favorite one. Everyone is Muslim, Christian, Yazidi, Zabidi, Kurdish. That means there are no black people. There's no white people. We are people. We are Iraq. I wish the United States would take on that type of belief system. You know what? There are no Democrats. There aren't. No, but unfortunately, we are compartmentalized. 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 I don't know what the word is. But we are putting these little boxes by the media and these people that are bandwagon political beaters that say these Democratic liberal blah, blah, blah. And these Republicans are these bad Republicans, blah, blah, blah. They want to take our social system. They, they want to be their criminals. They do this. Well, let me tell you this. The whole political system's fucked up. It doesn't matter who you look at. They're all guilty. They're all guilty somewhere. But if we looked at each other as like human beings and treated each other with respect and tried the guilty for what they were really guilty of, the world would actually be a better place. Hate to say it. I don't care from the president on down. They're all bad. Put a few good ones in there and let's start over. Revolution ain't a bad idea. But to re be revolutionary, it's hard to do. And that's why people like Iraq and Ecuador, that's why they're getting a lot of pub because... To talk that talk and to put up a few memes on Facebook doesn't make you a political badass. According to each security authority that caused the devastation of Iraq. That's right. Find out who the political infiltrants are, just like in any country, and get rid of them. Repeal all laws that have been in place since 2003 to this day from all interim governments by the United Nations until government is formed. Now, there's a problem with that. Because it's kind of like putting the chicken before the egg. Oh yeah, there's the first F-bomb. I'm going to drop probably about 50 of them, but there's the first one. Yeah, you need love, kindness, and respect. And respect only comes into play that you actually take their past, punish them for it, and you go forward. If all you do is bitch about what they did and there's never an arrest, I kind of have a fault with that. Okay? It's kind of like me bitching about being black and never getting reparations. Well, at some point, I got to kind of take my black self and say, I got to go forward. I got to make my own way. I, I, I respect slavery to the highest degree. And I'm not, I'm not saying any diminishing fact to slavery because it's the worst thing that ever happened to, to African-American society as being a black person. But at some point, I've got to push forward. Respect what happens and don't fall under the slavery, whether it be oppression, ec socioeconomic, or whatever. Put myself in a educational standpoint that those things don't happen to me, my children, or my family ever again. And I think that's important when you look at politics, when you look at your socioeconomic boundaries, when you look at your interper interpersonal boundaries, because like I've said all along, if you show me your five friends, you show me your five people that you share most of your time and your scrutiny with, not people you bullshit with, not people you talk on the phone with, but five people that you spend the majority of your time with, I will show your altitude. Not your aptitude, your altitude. Your aptitude could be great, but your altitude could be faltering because the friends you keep don't really have any altitude. Iraqi campaign to punish Iran. If you really want to punish someone, you punish their pocketbooks. Okay? I've said this before. You've got to stop buying cheap goods. Iraqis have launched a campaign on social media to boycott Iranian goods. That's what they need to do. Hit them in their pockets. Iraq, Iran has infiltrated the Iraqi marketplace by almost 90%. And it's kind of like, Iran is kind of like China to America. Get their crap out of here. Now, the cool thing about it is they're not strapped with tariffs that the American people are paying for, by the way. We're paying for those tariffs. Don't think that money doesn't escape us. I don't want to hear differently because I know I'm paying for tariffs. That's why I don't shop at Walmart. I don't shop at Walmart because of the world's biggest polluter. And they're also the world's biggest socioeconomic racist. I hate Walmart. And if you're employed by Walmart, I'm sorry, work somewhere else. Boycott Walmart. Over the past 10 years, the Iraqi market has been flooded with products imported from most of Iraq's neighbors. Iranian goods were not limited to anything but included almost everything from vegetables to dairy products, electrical goods to cars, building materials, gas, and electricity. That's the problem. Who you trade with as much as the problem is as far as the deficit, the product, the margin, the structure, and how much of it they sell you. Think of it. 
If you've got one friend that sells you everything and that friend gets mad at you and they don't want to sell you anything anymore, what happens? But if you dabble a little bit over here, you set up a little bit over there, you make yourself so sufficient in electricity, you do a little bit of this, you start to set up a little bit over here, you're more self-sufficient. Let's go Iraq is a good idea. It's kind of like make America great again. That is the best catchphrase that America's had probably in 20 years, by the way. I don't, I don't mean to like Donald Trump or don't like Donald Trump. Make America great again is probably, I think, one of the best catchphrases I've ever heard for America. You know? Besides Rock the Vote. I think Rock the Vote's iconic also, but Make America Great's awesome. Now, who are the players that are influencing what's going on? You've got to understand there's militias inside of Iraq. They're called the Quds, the Quds Force. They're a unit and they're a part of the Iran's Revolutionary Guard, the IRGC. They're directed to carry out unconventional warfare and intelligence activities responsible for extra terrestrial, not terrestrial, territorial operations in command by Major General, remember this name guys, Qasim Salami. The Qud's force supports non-state actors in many countries, Le and Le and Lebanese, Hezbollah, Hamas, and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza Strip, West Bank, Yezmahuz, and Shia militias in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. What that means to you is that Qasim Somali is responsible for being part of the civil war in Syria. He's a part of, or probably responsible for Hezbollah, Hamas, Palestine, Islamic, Jihad, the Brotherhood in uh, Egypt. This is probably a more badass or a more organized badass than your boy Baghdadi. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Baghdadi did worse things and blah, blah, blah. This man has been shedding blood since 1972. Baghdadi shed blood a lot too, but I want you guys to understand that this man right here is a badass that people know very little about. That when we spoke about a general that had very great pop, pop, popularity in Iraq, this man has great popularity, but on the Iranian side, he's a bad guy. Now, he is almost accredited as being the true PM of Iran. He spends a lot of his time in Iraq. Now, when he went to have a meeting with Sistani, Sistani gave him the big finger. Told him, hey man, screw you, I'm not going to meet you. When he did that, right afterwards, that's when all the protests took place. It was not advertised. It was not a big deal. All Sistani basically gave was a moder or speech. That basically now it comes out in all of his speeches on Friday. Something about we are not Najari or something like that. Not Najari, like not the majority, not, not Majora, not Majora. And that's all you hear ringing out inside of the Iraqi square. We're not Majora, we're not Majora, we're not Majora, we're not Majora. It rings true. It's like we're not the majority. And I looked it up what it meant, but I don't see it right now. But this guy is responsible for starting all the major gangs of terrorism. He's not just a, a great military mind, but he's a, a basically a terroristic mind that starts organized groups that carry out terrorist acts within claws. You talk about the five eyes. This guy is the five known eyes of the Middle East, and he's a badass. And he's in Iraq. And Sistani basically told you, screw you, I'm not talking to you anymore. And just months ago, Sistani was taking pictures with the guy. What changed? Sistani recently just started telling the youth, you know what? We don't need interference from Iran anymore. We don't need this to happen. And then also what changed? Sadr started doing a lot of counter business in Iran. Sadr is an Iranian puppet. He's the one that really didn't want revolution because he figured he'd get exposed. But in the exposure, he figured he'd join the, the populace. And guess what? As soon as things got a little hot, he ran right back over to Iran to go get instructions from the puppet masters. They're the ones calling for Mahandi's head. I think Sadr's people from Sadr City are in there carrying out Sadr's instructions because they're over a million strong calling for Mahandi's head. That's not what the people want. If you look at their list of demands, they never demand Sauter's head. They ask for a change of government. Understanding what they're asking for and their demands, they're very clear. They never ask for Mahani's head. Not even the beginning. Do you guys not get what I'm saying here? This boils down to a, a very, it's a sleight of hand between Sistani, a guy named Kamimi, which is the supreme leader of 
Iran, I think I'm saying that correctly, their, their guy who became the, uh, the supreme leader of Iran, a guy named Salami, who is the general of the Q's force, and Sistani, who's 88 years old, saying, you know what? This is bullshit. The Iraqi people, the Shiite, the, the fundamental Shiite religion has not grown because of the oppression of our own religion based upon these people ideologically because that's all they're preaching to all these different Muslims. That's where all this is coming from. Now, the reforms are going to happen because the Grand Ayatollah deems it so. And they can happen because there's a workforce behind it. I'm going to show you guys on Wednesday that there's actual machinery and technology behind it because Donna's going to be on here. That's part two of this discussion, right, of Iran, you know, protest and, ter and, 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 and whatever else I just said on the thumbnail. But this is major activity that's happening here that you've got to understand why this is happening. They want to pattern themselves after places like Japan and after places that have had, you know, slow growth, great economical gains because of the private sector. But to do so, you have to have a strong investor health. And you can't have that if people believe fundamentally that you're based upon some crazy religious sect, which is what Iran is preaching. And as long as uh, uh, Iran has a foothold in your in your in your political system, any smart investor besides us crazy denarians aren't typically going to invest in you. Oh yeah, and by the way, the good general, the one that everybody talks about, such a badass and in Iraq and creasing all this havoc that he's not. He's not, he's not at all. Guess what? He's been under US sanctions economically since 2018. Oh yeah, I did my homework. You can't hold this regime that's currently in place liable for 15 years of corruption, nor will it get rid of 15 years of oppression, scarcity of funds, food, or whatever. No one can prove that Mahandi stole anything. Not yet. Is he an Iranian sympathizer? Hell yeah, he probably is. But Alak is a way worse being that he facilitated the auctions that let Maliki get rich, Abadi get rich, Jaburi, and several others. The actual Iraqi citizens should be screaming for a lock's head. Crimes against humanity for Maliki, and he's liable, and so is Abadi, and so is Maliki for crimes against humanity against the fall of Mosul. If you ever want to figure out where all of the economic ties to Iran come from, if you ever go to Wikipedia's page and look at National Iraqi Alliances, it makes a list of 1 through 20. I want to say probably at least 50 to 60% of all the alliances from the Supreme Council of the Islamic Revolution, the Badr Organization, the Islamic Dawah Party, on down, Hezbollah is in Iraq. If you start to recognize these names, because these are the Iranian influences that the actual Iranian citizens want to get out. That's what you're looking to see. So if you're looking for mass arrest, you're looking for arrest of politicians, not on a governor level, but on an MP level. So if the citizens want to see arrest of people of 2003, they're basically spilling out to each and every one of you guys that are listening to this right now. They're telling you they want to see people like a body arrested, Jaburi, Amiri, Hakeem, somebody of that nature that they can prove is under great scrutiny because of their economic imbalances. And all you got to do is check their bank accounts. And what the Iraqi people have. Because you got to understand this. How did all these people make all this money and the Iraqi people don't have anything? So that's where they screwed up. See, if Iraq was smart, they wouldn't publish how much money they made in the oil business. See, for years they tell everybody, we're broke, we're broke, we're broke. We ain't got no money. We ain't got no money to do the HCL. We ain't got no money to do Article 140. And now they're telling everybody, well, Iraq's made enough money to run three countries. And then all of a sudden the Iraqi citizens will say, hold up. Well, we have rights. We have a constitution. There's things in place that say that we should have this money. How come this politician's made all this money and his brother was supposed to do this and he never did this? And there's all these projects that got funded that they never got done. And what about hospitals and churches and housing units? 
That's why there's a freaking revolution going on. And that's why things are going to change because now they understand what to identify. And once you start to understand what you can identify, you can now start to go after them. That's why people like a body's house got surrounded the other day. They're looking for him. They're going to get him one day. A body's going down. A body teamed up with Hakeem and Sauter. Sauter's dirty, Hakeem's dirty. We already know that. There's no secret to that. There's no linchpin to the Iraqi dinar. You know what the linchpin is? Arresting the corrupt, stop buying Iranian goods, get rid of the foothold into Iraqi politics, stop buying Iranian goods, start stop importing stupid goods, buy, buy Iraq first, just like we said, buy America first. And guess what? Input the things that will help you grow technologically and then put people in place that, can, that are trustworthy that will help you grow. That's how you grow. The U.S. calls for the restriction of the Iraqi, lift of the re, uh, restriction of the Iraqi press. Problem with that is the United States should have called for the lift of the internet use on Iraq. They should have told them you cannot restrict the internet use in Iraq, no matter how good or how bad it is. You know what? It's a growing phase. You're 15 years of democracy. You guys have screwed up. You know what? You let Iran in there to infiltrate some things. And you know what? It's bad. But you know what? Don't screw up your Article 7 to go back to Article, or excuse me, your Article 7 to go back to 6 because you're, you're, you're vain. The Middle East, for all of its great things, as far as, um, you know, dedication, all the things that I could see them doing great, they're vain. And individually, it seems like a lot putting his name on the bills. It, they do a lot of things out of vanity instead of practicality. And this is one of them. Quit cutting off the freaking internet. Man, quit tear gassing the people, putting uh, head bombs on people. You know, where you got people putting walks on their heads. Quit doing those things. You know, Halabusi trying to save his job by saying, we assure you that, you know, if we get rid of how, if we get rid of PM Amandi, then this is your boss. If we get rid of, there will be no political vacuum as long as you appoint somebody. Well, here's the problem with that. There's a general distrust for Americans in Iraq. Even though they're chanting for America, as soon as you appoint one and that doesn't work out, guess what? We hate America. The Iraqi people need to walk on their own too. They need to separate their currency from the dollar. We don't need to meddle our hands in that. We let them go through their growing pains. That's kind of like fighting the Civil War. And then somebody, somebody like France comes along and says, you know what? Black people, we support you. We're going to fight with the black people. What the fuck? Come on, no. That's your fight. That's your one-on-one. -on -one. Citizens against the government. You got to fade. You got to take your own fade. You guys got to go through your own thing. The citizens don't need to let up. They need to keep fighting and you let things go on until they get their... Their demands met, and they're doing it with their lives, and God forbid there's bloodshed, but bloodshed sometimes is met by results, and that's what needs to happen. Now, you want to start a civil war in Tehran? Stop buying those Iraqi goods. The only way that uh, Iran is still afloat right now, besides their underground oil business and their support through terrorism, black market stuff like drugs and other those things, is their sale of goods in Iraq. You want to see a civil war happen in Iran? Let them stop buying and selling their goods. And they've already started to stop doing it. Don't worry about that. It's already stopped. Now, an economist agree with me. His name is Ghanim Al-Abid. Confirmed that Iran products invaded Iraq markets. I told you by 90%. Most of the labs of Iraq stopped because of the Iranian product, which invaded Iraq local markets by 90%. He explained the economic situation in Iran is the most prominent problem of the people. And if Iraq boycotted Iran products, I do not rule out a revolution in Tehran. That's it. That's all I'm waiting on. I'm not saying that's when a reinstatement would happen. But if you want to see the tails turn and when the rabbit truly has the gun, the, the, our, the Iraqi people have already stopped buying their products. They're letting that stuff sit on the shelves from vegetables to fruit to anything. They're not buying their stuff. They're not using their labor force. They're fed up. They've burnt their embassy to the floor and then raised an Iraqi flag on top of it because they've said, you know what? We're tired of this crap. We're done. Now, if you want my honest opinion about a lot of things, this is the tale of two Ayatollahs. One Sistani, one Khamenei. They don't really like each other. They're based upon two religious sects. That's what's going on in Iraq, truly. 
If you want to research that on your own, I talked a lot about it tonight, but that's a big deal. Khomeini and Sistani. Sistani, who is truly Iranian, is leading, you know, I think through an underground movement. He's older. He's seen the ways that, you know what, religion and the state don't mix. And you know what, to truly free Iraq, I got to tell him, don't let Iran meddle. And he did. And that's what's going on right now. Now, if you want to talk about terrorism way worse than ISIS in Iraq, General Salami, I'm saying his name probably incorrectly, Salami or something, um, he's the one that helped fight side by side with the Persian Winter Forces and everybody else to get ISIS out of Iraq. And I heard the name, not the name, but I heard the cons and the Badr organization. I heard those names early on in my study with the Iraqi Dinar and thought, man, wow, what great job those guys did to help those guys out to get rid of ISIS. But the reason why Iran helped Iraq get rid of ISIS is because ISIS was truly trying to set off the revolutionary bomb. And Iraq was too sleep at the wheel to know it because Abadi was truly the first Iranian sympathizer by proxy that anybody ever had. Maliki was the worst. You can go through articles day by day that you can see him quoted with stuff with Sistani and everything else, asking, you know, telling people about Khomeini and his great pride for him and visiting with him and going back and forth with him. He's a bastard. Maliki's one of the worst devil assholes of all time. And he's a total Iranian sympathizer. Now, that's the background. Those are the players. If you've got a question, why don't you ask me? Call me. Somebody put my line up, please. Let me get this party started correctly here. I had 88 people watching before I started. Oh, I'm up to 295. What's the deal, baby? Started correctly here. Under the China deal is done. <laughs> yeah, right. The China deal has nothing to do with Iraq. Hate to say that, kids. China's, China's going to do their own thing. Iraq's going to do their own thing and everything will be fine. What's the date for the WTO ascension? Um, it's in November. That's why it's a big month. November to remember because if they do actually ascend to the WTO, they have to have an international recognized currency. But it does not have to have a nominal value. It has to have a nominal value because of the oil trade. Yep, Laura, there are things that are saying that our, our article saying that the citizens are boycotting Iranian goods, I know. Um, welcome aboard. Yeah. Oh, that's what he's answering. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's right about that. Yeah, Sauter's a, Sauter's a snake in the grass. Probably the one of the worst bastards that ever Iraq ever came across. Think about this. Sauter's picked three VP or three prime ministers. All of them have been fucked up. He picked Maliki. He did. He picked Maliki. Sauter did. He picked a body. And he picked Mahandi. Sauter's the problem, not the PM. No, if they start revolting in Iran, you won't just see, because then you have a, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard will take care of Iran. The militia groups will stay in Iraq because that's a subculture. You got to understand. But what you got to have happen is we've got to cut off the parliament and cut off the goods and services so the money flow stops. The one thing I know about armies is they run on their stomach. If they don't have any money to feed them, then they ain't going to fight. It's funny how the proxy government was supposed to be gone in October and it's pretty much like it fell off the face of the earth because you don't hear about it anymore. I wonder what happened. Sammy Dean, no, that's not true. The actual proxy government stopped. Everything was done. The proxy government's done. They filled, fulfilled everything. But what happened is the proxy government got filled and the citizens said, wait a minute, it's still the same crap we've had our whole, the whole time. Nothing changed. But it really was changed. And there were articles out there that showed un undeniable facts that it's better than it's ever been in Iraq as far as government was concerned. But you know what? The people had such high hopes that you know what? Why well, is it bullshit? And they went to the streets. There's nothing worse than having an expectation that expectation is not met. 
Golden zombies. Yeah. Yeah. You welcome, Sammy. Prince Lex, you know I got your back. I'm always here for explanation. I have a deeper meaning. I read this a little bit more than your average. I want to understand the players to understand the game. Because if you understand who controls the chess pieces, like that is general, like Sistani, like Kamimi, like Iran, like then you understand the stakes. Understand that America's actual stronghold in Iraq only happened within the last few years. It didn't happen in 15 years got better over 15 years we're trying to get rid of them 